we have one who can see. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, guess what? <laughs> can you see? We're going to talk about something. We're talking about the surrendering of fingerprints and photos upon arrest. Now, the courts have said that uh, the police officers have a right to search the person in the immediate area around the person when they get arrested. Yeah, they're very technical with words. However, pay attention to this. The Fourth Amendment secures your right to be secure in your person, your possessions, your property, your effects, your papers. Papers and effects and property? Well, fingerprints and photos happen to be that. Now, uh, hey, the police, they can take your photo, so just close your eyes. Just close your eyes when they're taking the photo. Take the stupid photo, but close your eyes. They cannot identify you without your eyes, people. I know, I know, I know you don't understand this. Man, I played this game with them. You better believe it. Every single time they took the photo, I just closed my eyes. Oh, hey, trust me. Close your eyes or hold your head down. Even if they try to hold your head up, and they will. Ooh you're in their custody, so they will try to forcibly hold your head up but they can't have their hands on your face <laughs> because if they have your hands on your face, then that image is not you because you don't have hands on your face. You feel me? That's the technicality. Yes, it's a tech. I told you, I've already tested the system thoroughly. I, I, I told you, I purposely allowed them to put me in jail so that I could test out every single theory, every single aspect and angle. I've done it. Unlike these other people doing videos who don't have the experience, who haven't tested it out, I have. If you don't believe me, then get the away from my channel. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm here to give you information. So for those of you who want to critique things, go someplace else. This ain't the place for you. Trust me. All right. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I purposely sat before... <laughs> these officers now hey 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 they will retaliate okay i promise you because when i did this to them they stripped me down put me in a weighted vest and threw me in a room with the air conditioning on okay and it was a doctor who came by the following morning who told them get him out of there literally her exact words get him out of there doctors have control over the officers they cannot ignore the doctor. And I complained to her, man, next thing you know, I was in a nice little comfortable room and heat and blankets and everything. They, they made me feel like a king after that. But what I'm trying to tell you is if you don't give fingerprints, if you don't give photos, what they will do is they will retaliate. You must understand that. So know the job is dangerous before you take it. Now, here's the next thing that you need to know, and you definitely need to know this, so pay attention. Some states have enacted laws that says that you must give your fingerprints and photos. Ladies and gentlemen, your fingerprints and photos are your property. It doesn't belong to Congress. Congress has no authority. Go back and look at the First Amendment. Congress has no right to abridge your secured rights. The Fourth Amendment secures in you the right to your person. The police, when they arrest you, they are only taking charge of the personal liberty to be at freedom, but not your rights. You don't waive your rights upon arrest. Okay? You don't waive any rights. You don't have to say, I plead the fifth. I'm exercising my right to remain silent. You don't have to say that. You can say whatever you want. Just say, I'm not under oath. Okay? <laughs> That's all you have to say is, I am not under oath. And anything I say, man, will not be used against me. Because if you attempt to do so, I'll get you for violating my rights. Ladies and gentlemen, the only time your words can be used against you is if you're under oath. By all means, I was acting. They were playing a role. I was playing a role. I'm told they're allowed to lie, so I, I decided I wanted to lie. Like a rug. They wanted to play with me. I wanted to play back. We were playing roles. They were operating in a capacity. I was operating in a capacity. I was saying anything I wanted to say because I have that right. Or are you going to tell me I don't have the right to say whatever I want to say? 
I wasn't under oath. What you see, they were under oath and you're under oath and you guys are allowed to lie. So equal protection of law says I get to do the same thing if I choose. And you can say that before a jury if you want. There is no law that allows a public official to lie to the public, a member of the public, a member of society, a member of the civilian population. There is no law that allows them to lie. That's abridging your right to petition government for a redress of grievance. Remember, they're supposed to be representing government, but the police and the courts are not representing government. They're private corporations. They have CAFRs, CAFRs, Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports, are annual comprehensive reports. CAFRs are simply their tax records. Ladies and gentlemen, the sovereign pays no tax to prove to you that they don't have qualified immunity or sovereign immunity. Pay attention. To prove to you that they don't have sovereign immunity or qualified immunity, they must be bonded. If they had immunity, absolute immunity, like the judges claim they have, then they wouldn't have to have a bond. Pay attention. If they have to have a bond to protect against violating your rights, that means that they're not immune because they can be sued. Their bond can be sued, which is suing them. That's why you go after the bond, people. You don't go after the person. You don't have the immunity argument. Just go after the bond. That proves they're not immune. Now you can go after the individual after you go after the bond, after you get a document on the record that they have a bond number. Ta-da! That's what this channel does for you. If you simply just pay attention. Now, you don't have to go back and listen to that because I'm not going to repeat that. I know some of you didn't get it. And some of you, it was way over your head. But some of you, oh, snap. Oh, God. Oh, do you know what I can do? That's what some people are doing right now. But some of you are going, I don't understand. And that's why you're going to have to listen to it a couple of times. Hold on now. I just asked this. This is Poe. 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 Po, 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 po. Po, po. And this is from Noi. N-O-I. Go to Google. Type in Noi. We'll do it one more time. Did it before, but y'all didn't pay attention. This is the legal communication. Urgent! Stop contracting with government. The volume is low, ladies and gentlemen, because I was driving. Okay, I apologize for that. The volume is by, by volume is low because I was driving. It even says it in the title. Watch this. Volume, low volume. Okay? Lord have mercy. Some people ain't gonna get it. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we're working on the Eon channel. I know, I know, I'll take care of that later. We're working on the Eon channel. This is the new Eon channel. Some of you guys have been to the Eon channel before. You can't click on anything. You can't go to anything. But we're going to also have availability of chat GPT and other things that are going to be located on this site. We're building it now. Stay tuned. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. That's a separate company, separate corporation from the Eon sole proprietorship. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a corporation. Okay? I'm part of that corporation, but I don't run the corporation. Does that make any sense? So glad I got that out in the open. All right, pay attention, y'all. Here we go. You're going to do NOI GitHub. Now, we want GitHub. G-I-T-H-U-B. NOI GitHub. I don't want to click on this because this will take me right there. I want to do the search for it. So watch this. Look, GitHub. World Power Bot. And then you have NOI GitHub. Now, watch this. I don't want topics. Don't want topics. The first one is the one that I need. I just want to make sure that you guys get it. GitHub, get it. <laughs> anyway, power your world in AI. We're going to click on Lex. And look, see? It's the whole code and everything. You're going to scroll down. Scroll down. Keep going. Right here. See, download. And you're going to Microsoft, Mac, Macintosh, and, and Windows, and Mac, and Micro, you know, and Linux. Windows, Mac, that's what you're downloading. You don't need to download all of this. You're going to download the program, install it on your computer. That will give you this. Then you're going to click on all, and you're going to have all of these. Watch this. All of these AI systems, okay? And I use Poe a lot, and I'm going to pay the $19. I got rid of the Google Gemini because that junk is a piece of junk. Literally, that junk is a piece of junk. But here I said this right here. Watch this. The issue is that when an individual is arrested, they still maintain the right to be secure in their person, property, possessions, assets, papers. 
that the police do not have automatic license to seize an individual's property that is unrelated to the arrest. Your fingerprints are not related to your arrest. Your photo is not related to your arrest. If you're being arrested for carjacking, your photo is not part of the arrest. Your fingerprints are not part of the arrest. Even if they're doing an investigation, ladies and gentlemen, they do not have a right to seize your property that is not incidental to the arrest without a warrant. Sorry, it's just the way the law is written. That an individual's fingerprints used for identification purposes is not lawful without their consent because fingerprints and photos taken are not mandatory in law. Pay attention, when they first wrote the Constitution, nobody was given fingerprints. Nobody was taking photos. No, go back. Go back and look that the people who put together the Constitution did not envision fingerprints and photos. And the Constitution has not been amended to include surrendering fingerprints and photos upon arrest. Plus, they'd have to get around the personal rights thing, the, un in the unalienable rights. The law, i.e., the Constitution, does not require an individual to get fingerprints or photo for identification purposes, which is then used and placed on the record as evidence of the defendant's identity, which is a violation of the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Surrendering fingerprints on those amount to self-incrimination, violating the constitutionally secured right of the individual. The issue you are raising regarding the use of fingerprints and photos for identification purposes is a complex legal issue with varying opinions among the courts and legal scholars. However, here are some cases that have addressed the issue. The Supreme Court held in 1973 that the compelled production of an individual's voice sample for identification purposes did not violate the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination because it did not require the defendant to provide any testimony. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it did violate the right against self-incrimination. And this is a different aspect of the question. This is after the person has already been arrested and they're using their voice sample because the voice is incidental to the arrest. In other words, it's the reason for him being arrested. There was some type of audio thing involved in that case. We're not talking about that. Hold on. The Supreme Court held that compelled extraction of an individual's blood for a blood alcohol test did not violate the Fifth Amendment against the right of self-incrimination because it was physical rather than testimonial. No, it's being used as evidence and an individual that evidence operates as testimony. Don't tell nobody, but the evidence is a witness against the individual and that's self-incrimination. The individual cannot be made a witness against themselves. Watch this. Hold on now. We got to get this because y'all got to get what the Supreme Court is saying and not saying. Wake up. The Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution. Stop listening. Pay attention. No person, meaning you, your mama, your grandfather, your uncle, your niece, your cousin, your nephew, an immigrant, an so-called illegal. No person. No person. Doesn't matter if they're a citizen or not shall be held to answer for any crime. See, it says, or otherwise, any crime, unless on presentment of indictment of a grand jury, pay attention, we don't care about arising in lands or naval forces or militias, when in actual service at the time of war or public danger, now we are in a time of war, pay attention, we are in a time of war, the March 9th, 1933 Act is the Training with the Enemy Act, it's a war, act don't believe me go back and read it nor shall any person now that's what we're looking at the nor shall any person be subject to the same offense twice to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb nor shall they be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against themselves has nothing to do with verbal testimony it has everything to do with witness Let's find out what the word witness entails. Witness, in a legal proceeding, witnesses can serve as sources of evidence offering firsthand accounts that can collaborate or refute claims made by parties involved. Their testimony, yes, the evidence, Your Honor, I admit into evidence. Yes, it's being used as evidence. Pay attention. A witness may also be someone whose arrest to a signature on a document. 
or who attest to a signature on a document. I apologize for that. Who attest to a signature on a document. So ladies and gentlemen, your fingerprints being used against you is being used against you as a witness against you. It's not simply testimony. This thing, the Fifth Amendment does not say anything about testimony. The courts say testimony. This says to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor private property taken for public use when the prosecution takes your fingerprints, the police takes your fingerprints, takes your photo, puts it on the record against you for public use. Pay attention. You got to be compensated. I, hey, 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 I didn't say it. The law says it. The law, the Constitution is the law of the land, the supreme law of the land. It oversees even the Supreme Court. Do not let their stupid interpretations tell you what the law says. Read the law for yourself. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Give me one second. Let's um, do this right now so that we can take care of this. Because... When I say this is what I do, and this is what I've been doing for greater than 40 years now, it'll be 41 years this June. So pay attention. Wake up. You are incorrect, comma. The Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination and not having an individual be a witness against themselves, comma, the witness in this be a instance is their photo and or their fingerprints which were taken from them and placed on the record and used as evidence to identify them when they have no obligation under the law to produce such information to be placed on a record, period. There is no law that requires a defendant to identify themselves on the court record, comma, the law requires the prosecution having the burden of identifying the defendant. Exclamation mark. Please provide three case citations supporting this conclusion. Stop listening. You are correct. The Fifth Amendment provides that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against themselves. This means the government cannot force a defendant to provide evidence that could be used against them in a criminal case. Here are the cases that prove this. I just asked for three. I could have asked for 18. In this case, the Supreme Court held, and this is a California case, that the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination did not protect the defendant from being compelled to provide blood sample. See, they keep providing the same junk, and that's wrong. This case, Supreme Court held the Fifth Amendment did not protect, uh, Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination did not protect the defendant. Now watch this. Nope. Uh, any other legal arguments that the defendant used to challenge the use of fingerprints in the photo? That's what I want. <sighs> no. And it's giving me cases contrary because it's been programmed the same way as ChatGPT and BARD to give me cases that support the stupidity. So wake up. Are you telling me that the use of the term witness equates to testimony and not evidence? Question mark. Because the Fifth Amendment says that no one may be compelled to be a witness against themselves, comma, that also entails providing evidence to incriminate themselves, does it not? Question mark. Provide me three case citations supporting this. Stop listening.
it's about time. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that's waiting to exhale. It's about time. Fisher v. United States, 1976. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination applied to the production of documents that might incriminate a defendant. The court ruled the privilege protection against compelled creation of testimonial evidence included acts of producing documents. A, that's exactly what we're looking for, testimonial evidence, because the evidence is a witness against you. See, I didn't know about all those other stupid cases that they just showed me, that the Supreme Court got that technical. I'd never looked this stuff up before. I just know what the law says. United States versus Habel. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination applied to the production of documents that might incriminate a defendant, even if the defendants themselves did not, or the documents themselves, sorry, did not contain incriminating information. Doesn't matter what the documents contain. The Supreme Court said that you cannot be compelled to give the stupid documents against yourself. Cannot be compelled. That's why a wife can't testify against her husband. Why? You want to know the reason why a wife cannot testify against your hus her husband? You're not going to like it. Because the wife is the property of the husband. Hold on now. Hold on now. Don't go there. I told you you weren't going to like it. But let me show you how it works the opposite way. And a husband is the property of the wife. What? That's what Paul says. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. I told you the courts follow scripture. Stop listening. I told you the courts follow the scriptures. Uh-oh, that what I couldn't do it that way. Hold on. Pay attention. Chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians. Now concerning the things about which you wrote, it is better for a man not to touch a woman. But because of the prevalence of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. And each woman have her own husband. So the Bible does not teach that uh, each man having his own male wife and each wife having her own female husband. Anyway, it says man and wife, woman. Sorry, I apologize. I'm just telling you what the scriptures say. Don't get mad at me. Go get mad at the scriptures. Get mad at the author. Let the husband give to his wife her due. That's right. And let the wife also do likewise to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, and her husband does likewise. The husband mm -hmm. does not have authority over his own body. Okay? But the wife does. <laughs> do not deprive each other except by mutual agreement for an appointed time, so that you may devote time to prayer and may come together again in order that Satan may not keep on tempting you for your lack of self-control. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll say it again. A wife doesn't own herself, the husband does. A husband doesn't own his wife, the wife does. That's why if a husband testify against a wife, he's testifying against himself. And if a wife testifies against her husband, she's testifying against herself. Self-incrimination, that's why it's in the law. That's why they have it to where a husband cannot testify against his wife and a wife cannot testify against her husband. That's where it comes from. I told you, been doing this for way too long. That's not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be over here. I don't know why I keep going to the blues to get to the blacks. You know, it's like going to the police. To, anyway, pay attention. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination applied to the production of document defendant's tax records. Donald Trump. The court ruled that the privilege protected against compelled creation of testimonial evidence, including the act of producing documents that might be used to establish a defendant's guilt. These cases establish that the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination applies not only to testimony, but also to the production of physical evidence that may be used for self-incrimination. Now watch this. I can't send you, yeah, I can send you guys poll. So I'm going to send you guys the, the section that we're dealing right now. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. 
I am going to move the Superior Court of the State of Connecticut for a dismissal with prejudice and to quash the evidence placed on the record identifying the defendant by demanding fingerprints and photos, period. And or the arresting authority, be it the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department, comma, threats and intimidation for demanding that I offer evidence testifying against myself in the form of fingerprints and or photos that would be used and introduced into the record as the first points of evidence by the prosecution as to the defendant's identity, comma, and when used in conjunction with other evidence, substantiates a claim and charge against the defendant, including and not limited to entering of a plea, which amounts to self-incrimination, period. For the entering of a plea admits the genius of the record, as well as submits one to the court's jurisdiction, exclamation mark, and The appearing before the court submits one to the court's jurisdiction, comma, each of these being used as evidence to convict a person of a crime, comma, and all of this evidence may only be had by the involuntary submission of a defendant such as myself, period. This is a violation of the first, comma, fourth, comma, fifth, comma, sixth, comma, eighth amendments to the Constitution for the United States Constitution. Of America. Period. Stop listening. <sighs> po, 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 po. Po, 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 po. I know it's impotent. I don't care about impotence. I said, give me a second. Let's see what it's saying. Specific legal arguments and strategies challenging fingerprint circumstances. That being said, the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Oh, no. Wake up. Wake up. I asked you to produce the motion in the Superior Court of Connecticut for a motion to dismiss with prejudice and to strike such evidence, comma, please produce the motion. Stop listening. Sorry. Uh-oh, it says it ain't going to do it. Oh, because it doesn't like the argument. Oh, snappity wappity. Oh, look at that. It, it just, it says I ain't producing nothing for you. You know what argument you just brought, homie? I ain't producing that. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am so sorry that it decided that it said, I, and homie, I'm not working with you on this. No, I'm not going to help you. And I was just copy message. Copy. Give us a second. We can go to chat GPT right now. Whew. Man, lordy, lordy, lordy. I am so sorry that it did that, y'all. Hold on. Let's see if we can do that. Now, ChatGPT might balk, but it will do the motion for me. That's why I like this, because I can use them against each other. They're all right here. See, they're all right here. You have to do one to the other and go back and forth. Uh, yeah, like I said, he might balk. Mm-mm. Uh, when crafting your motion. Aw. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong one. I'm sorry. I got to use the, uh, I got to use my homie. Okay. We're going to let that go. Uh, conflict of interest motion. Nope. That's not the right one. Let's go here. I'm looking. Nope. That's not it either. 
That's not it either. That's this is one. This is this is my homie right here. Hold on now. Let's do it here. Whew. We need uh, Covington Law. Now we're getting ready to make Covington Law its own self-accessing. Um, what do you call it? A uh, app for the website, so where you can just go there and get the information and get the template like this right here, where to just do the motion for you. We're getting ready to take care of that. That's going to be on the Eon.TV. That's what we're doing for you guys. So that you'll have a place where you can go and get motions done. You'll have to definitely go in because the system will always, always err on the side of the government. Ladies and gentlemen, it's too late to apologize. I got to go. Hold on one second. Apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. That's the gentleman that's helping with the GPT. That's helping to put together the Covington Law GPT. And that's what it's going to be called. I couldn't come up with a better name other than Covington Law. You talk about the most winningest attorney before the Supreme Court, a Jehovah's Witness, at the time when he won most of the cases before the Supreme Court, the most winningest group before the Supreme Court and the European Court of Human Rights. It's got to be some reason why they keep winning. Hey, hey, I'm just saying is all. Now, let's get back to this document right here. I asked it to complete a motion template. And what it did was it completed a motion template. This is Covington Law. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this petition. You guys, you have the video that we just did right here, the talking I just did. You have this. And look, it put links. Lord have mercy. It literally, it put links for it. Oh, y'all getting this one. Ooh, Kim, y'all gonna get this whole PDF. We making this into a PDF for certain. It put links. Okay. And that's what I like. We're gonna put the whole conversation on PDF. So we gotta go to, I gotta make sure. This is the presiding judge of the Supreme Court for the state of California. So I had to make sure that I wasn't somebody's personal information that I was clicking on because we can't have that. Y'all y'all not seeing nobody's personal information. You know what I'm saying? I help too many people. Okay. Somebody said, Oh, and when you listen to his videos, you gotta turn your volume down because he 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 gets animated. He gets very loud. Look, y'all, I'm black and I'm loud. Say it again. Okay. Wait, hold on. Where am I? Oh, oh, don't have don't have the links right here. Where the links at? Hold on, gotta undo that. Gotta undo that. We're gonna do it this way. Let me see if the links are here. I don't see the links. I don't see the hot links. Where are my hot links at? Oh no, the links ain't there. Y'all can't click on them links. Ah, I am mad. Oh no, mama. What's going on with our links? Well, sorry, you guys won't be getting the links. Sorry about that, dude. Sorry about that. You got the cases, but you won't get the links. Let's go back to chat GPT. I, I mean, I like the fact that it had the links. But, oh, it actually put the cases here anyway. No, that was me. So, hold on. Let's make sure. Did I copy the right thing? I don't think I copied the right thing. I think I did copy the right thing because that's right, submission. So give me one second. Got it. I, I, it's been a long day. Where's my submission part? Submission. There you go. It copied the right thing. Okay, now watch this. We're going to do this for y'all since we don't have our links. Let's see. Wake up. Alleged. All hyphen caps estate. All caps that. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to start creating 
non-profit religious organizations for people, it will be $100 plus fees because the work that we have to do to create it, we set up the corporation for you. We give you a registered agent. The fee for the registered agent is usually $25 a year. That's between you and the registered agent. All mail goes to the registered agent. It'll be in your all caps name. All information, all charges, anybody bringing any claim against you, you just go ahead and show the difference between you and the corporation. Ain't that, nobody can do to argue about it because you had just proved it. We'll talk about that in a future video. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Comes down the alleged defendant, your all caps name, by and through, we get rid of this. Wake up. Under the right of election, comma, the. Stop listening. Let's see if y'all understand this. Comes now the alleged defendant, your all caps is state name, under the right of election, the undersigned counsel, and pursuant to the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution and relevant case law, hereby moves this honorable court to dismiss with prejudice the charges against the defendant and to quash the evidence obtained through the compelled production of fingerprints, photographs, and the entry of a plea. The defendant asserts that such acts of compulsion constitute a violation of the constitutional rights against self-incrimination as protected under the First, Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, and Eighth Amendments to the Constitution of the United States of America. Grounds for Motion Fifth Amendment Protections The Supreme Court has established that the privilege against self-incrimination protects against the compelled creation of testimonial evidence, not limited to verbal testimony but extending to the production of documents or physical evidence that could incriminate a defendant, Fisher v. United States, 425 U.S. 391, 1976, United States v. Hubble. Now, I'm going to cut that off because we don't need that. Now, watch this. I want you all to pay attention. We're going to indent this. Wake up. We must understand that the Fourth Amendment protection, comma, stating that an individual has the unalienable right to be secure in their, open quote, person, close quote, comma, open quote, property, close quote, comma, open quote, possessions, close quote, comma, open quote, effects, close quote, Nah, we'll leave it there. Stop. And other things. Period. Each of these are directly associated with open quote, fingerprints, close quote, and open quote, photos, close quote comma, which are part of the investigation to find evidence of guilt against the defendant, period. This evidence is then gathered and produced to the prosecution, comma, this evidence cannot be compelled as it violates the Fifth Amendment right against such compulsory evidentiary testimony. Close quote. Open quote. Open quote. There is no law, open bracket, a statute, is not the same as a law. 
comma, statutes written by a revisionary council through codification, comma, is not part of the legislative process, comma, and when charged against an alleged defendant, comma, operates as non-obligatory, period. Individuals must follow the law, comma, the law must follow the legislative process, comma, without these two prerequisites, comma, it creates no obligation and or duty upon any civilian and or person and or member of the population to comply. Comma, and I do hereby challenge as well as object to any suggestion and or presumption to the contrary. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Close bracket. Wake up. Close bracket. Stop listening. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It is necessary to do this so that you'll understand what's going on. We'll create the PDF for you so that you'll have the PDF so that you can reproduce this. But everybody who's been charged with a crime, go back in and ask that the charges be completely dismissed with prejudice. They cannot use your fingerprints against you. If the police have retaliated against you, we'll put in a paragraph for that as well. Because that makes them having waived their so-called, um, what do you call it, qualified immunity because they're not allowed to violate your rights in order to prosecute you. No one's rights may be violated. That's why the law says no one may be held without due process of law. Once they violate your rights, they violate due process. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read the law. Don't tell nobody. All right, sorry about that. Give me one second. We must understand that the Fourth Amendment protection, stating that an individual has the unalienable right to be secure in their person, property, possessions, effects, and other things. Each of these are directly associated with fingerprints and photos, which are part of the investigation to find evidence of guilt against the defendant. This evidence is then gathered and produced to the prosecution. This Wake up. The property of the alleged defendant and obtaining such information is Stop listening. Which are the property of the alleged defendant and obtaining such information is part of the investigation to find evidence of guilt against the defendant. This evidence is then gathered and produced to the prosecution. This evidence cannot be compelled at it violates the Fifth Amendment right against such compulsory evidentiary testimony. There is no law. A statute is not the same as a law. Statutes written by a revisionary council through codification is not part of the legislative process, and one charged against an alleged defendant operates as non-obligatory. Individuals must follow the law. The law must follow the legislative process. Must follow the law. The law must follow the legislative process. Without these two prerequisites, it creates no obligation and slash or duty upon any civilian and slash or person and slash or member of the population to comply, and I do hereby challenge as well as object to any suggestion and slash or presumption to the contrary. Violation of constitutional rights, the involuntary submission of such evidence by Wake up. Secured. Stop listening. The involuntary submission of such evidence by the defendant under threats or intimidation by law enforcement without proper safeguards against self-incrimination directly violates the defendant's constitutional protections.
Wake up. In the usual course of business, comma, law enforcement agencies, comma, whether federal and or local, comma, have a process known as booking, comma, this is an administrative process, comma, and not one that is required by constitutionally cognizable law. Period. The booking process, comma, seizing a person's fingerprints through an offer to contract, comma, violates the right to contract clause of the Constitution. Period. No one, close quote, open quote. in both the Fifth Amendment and the Contract Clause means, comma, no one. The, open quote, close quote, capitalize that, close quote, open quote, all caps that, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and when it says, comma, to be compelled to be a witness against themselves, comma, this includes evidentiary, documentary, testimony. comma, and being compelled to testify, comma, literally means to contract with the court and offer up testimony, period. No one may be compelled to contract, comma, when the police department and our law enforcement agency ask someone to give their fingerprints and or, open quote, we need to take your photo, close quote, comma, these constitutes Open quote, offers to contract, close quote, all caps that, which may be refused, period. However, comma, in the usual course of business, comma, these policing and or law enforcement agencies, comma, often retaliate against a party who, refuses to contract, period. Any evidence obtained under these circumstances makes it inadmissible in any court, and I do hereby demand that such evidence, if applicable in this instance and brought to this court's attention, either verbally or in communication, otherwise, comma, be stricken from the record in perpetuity, exclamation mark, due process must prevail, comma, and cannot be eroded by technicalities, exclamation mark. An individual do not have to plead the fifth. Comma, an individual does not have to notify any person 
that they are exercising a secured right, comma, for then that will take away the security in the right itself, comma, thereby converting it to a privilege, which is unconstitutional, exclamation mark. The Constitution is not a right generating document, but a rights securing document. Comma, let the record so be admitted. Exclamation mark. instant matter and the secured Alleged Stop listening all right, ladies and gentlemen, because we're doing a video and I'm doing this stuff live so you can see the document and see what's being added, I got one more section. Yeah, we'll leave this one. Alleged defendant, we'll leave that one. We'll leave this one the way it is. The defendant's constantly just... Let's do that. Stop it. Okay, let's do that right there. And... Let's see. Now we got to do the motion correctly. So wake up. Petition. Petition. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing right now. We don't have to make it any more fancy than what it is. We've had some judges say that individuals pro se come in comes now. Ladies and gentlemen, you can comes now or do whatever you want. That's your choice. The courts don't have any jurisdiction over that. How you do your petition is how you do your petition. Now, look, 
you see I'm doing this on the fly, okay? Less than an hour it takes me to produce a single motion. Now that's only because I'm taking the time to explain. It would have been less than 25 minutes it would have been to take and do this. What we're gonna do is this right here. Wake up. The court has continued to interrupt my person when I'm speaking. Comma, has attempted to assign one of its officers to represent my interests, which is a violation of my constitutionally secured right to counsel of choice, period. The number one conflict of interest is that, comma, an officer of the court is a creature of the state, comma, a public defender comma, works for the state, period. A grievance attorney is under contract with the state, comma, it is the state through its district and or county and or city and or other local agency and or federal agency comma, that is bringing a suit against my person and does not under law qualify as a corpus delecti. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I took the time to go ahead and complete the document. I haven't done any proofreading. I just added a bunch more case citations showing that what you all didn't know, and you should have known this, that police officers don't get to determine probable cause. They don't have any jurisdiction for determining probable cause. The Supreme Court of the United States doesn't get to give the police the right to determine probable cause. There is no probable suspicion. There is no articulated suspicion. There is nothing like that written anywhere in the Constitution. Either a crime was witnessed or it was not witnessed. It has to be a crime. It cannot be a fra infraction. See, what the Supreme Court is saying that officers can determine probable cause to arrest or probable suspicion and all of that stupid stuff, what they're trying to tell you is that that's statutory law. I mean, you got to understand there's a difference between statutes and the law. That's what this document explains. It lets you know at the very beginning, let's go to the top, it's tippity tip, tippity top. This is seven pages. Now you're going to have to get rid of this part. You don't include anything right here. This is just explaining explain it let's get rid of that now forget that we don't need no explanation what we doing okay so here's your document you put it for your court it says connecticut but ain't nothing in here talking about nobody's connecticut all right all right and i can't do it in pdf because there's certain sections that you're going to have to fill out but notice this links that's right hot links we got links in our document see links okay links 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 now what i would do is if i was you guys i'd go ahead and copy them links into the document but that's up to y'all you don't have to you don't have to because you're going to send this document now if i was you i'd make it into a pdf which will keep those links and i would send them the document now you're going to be sending them to them paper form but i definitely keep that for your benefit all right hold on now we ain't finished we're going to be going into over an hour i'm going to attach the link to the document in the title pay attention certification validation and verification go over this this right here just put your date in but this right here lets you know that you sent it to them by all means you even talked about giving it to the clerk the clerk because the attorney signed in with the court and they're required to become a member of this electronic filing system the clerk serves the documents on them all the time all you have to do is follow with the clerk and leave a statement like this showing that it was the clerk's responsibility because they have a contract. <laughs> okay, now this right here is your instruction, so we're going to put that in red. In red. Okay, don't include that in your, your template, but this stuff, include it. These case laws, include it. All right, hey, I got to go. Y'all take care. Be up there.